Today we'll be talking about hydrogen. I'm sure everybody by now is familiar with the move towards renewable energy and the electrification of fleets around the world to help us transition towards a decarbonised society. However, hydrogen is a molecule that continues to be pushed into this discussion as we move towards decarbonisation. You might be wondering why this is. What is hydrogen? What's its ultimate use cases? And why is it being discussed so significantly recently? Well, today we'll be exploring it all. Renewable energies are fantastic and they will help us to decarbonise many industries. They have many different use cases across the sectors. However, renewable energy will not be successful to help decarbonise every industry. Along with that as well, there's a range of different transport types and electric vehicles powered by batteries will not be the most efficient case in every single one of these use cases. And this is where hydrogen may potentially come into it. We've seen significant discussions as well as significant investments from governments around the world. The New South Wales government recently announced another pathway, investing up to $3 billion into the hydrogen transition. And there's a range of other investments around the world, as well as individual leaders from the private sector that have been flying the flag for green hydrogen moving forward. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make daily videos, so if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our daily episodes. So before we explore hydrogen, what green hydrogen is and the potential use cases for this, it makes sense for us to take a step back and have a think about what is net zero. It's a phrase that's often thrown around, but often people mistake what it actually means or why it's so important as we transition towards this decarbonized society. So we know that we've been burning fossil fuels as a society over this past period, and this has resulted in more carbon dioxide going up into the atmosphere. We're aiming to avoid a rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And so there's been an agreement and a target set for net zero for 2050. Now, not every government around the world has signed this agreement yet, but this is the focus and the trend, and both private as well as government side are working towards this. Interestingly, however, net zero is not only about reducing our carbon dioxide emissions. This, of course, is important. However, there's also another component of the net zero, which is negative emissions. And this is talking about the need for greenhouse gas removal from the atmosphere. So on one side, of course, we're trying to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, but we're also trying to think about how we can remove the greenhouse gases that have already been emitted. And of course, there's a range of different factors to do that. Planting of trees and forests help to naturally do that, but new technologies are going to be have, have to be leveraged moving forward to help us move towards net zero over the next three decades. Net zero is the global greenhouse gas emissions removals balancing themselves out, and it is important to note that as the push for decarbonisation continues to grow, new technologies and a range of different solutions are all going to have to feed in together to help us move towards this as a society. I'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below what you think about net zero and the move towards renewable energy. And then let us know your thoughts on hydrogen and any ways that you're looking to get exposure towards the sector moving forward. And so with that understanding, you might be wondering why hydrogen? We've got wind, we've got solar, we've got hydro. There's a range of different renewable energies that continue to be rolled out with significant investment behind them. So why hydrogen? Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. Interestingly, however, hydrogen is significantly abundant, but on Earth, it's not found in isolation. It's normally paired with other molecules. And so to get hydrogen in its purest form to be able to be used, there's actually an energy intensive process to help to extract it and split it out. Hydrogen by itself is a clean burning molecule, which of course is important because a range of different molecules and fuel sources emit carbon emissions. And as we move towards a decarbonized society, we need fuel sources that are actually going to be reducing the emissions used. So hydrogen attracts a lot of attention as this clean burning molecule. However, as mentioned, the current incumbent processes emit CO2. Hydrogen is a versatile energy carrier. And the focus for green hydrogen is that if hydrogen can be extracted and then ultimately deployed, it can help to decarbonize difficult industries. There's a range of heavy industries such as steel making or cement making, where there's a significant use at the moment of fossil fuels such as coal. And these are very difficult to decarbonize and the current renewable energies will struggle to do that at scale. However, hydrogen has some potential use cases to help to decarbonize these industries, as well as a range of other use cases, which we'll talk about later on in the video. It is worth noting that hydrogen, once it's been extracted, has two main use cases that you can use it with. Firstly, it can be burnt to produce heat. Of course, this has a range of different industrial use cases as well as at home use cases. Or then it can be fed into a fuel cell to help to create electricity. If you've spent any time exploring hydrogen or the broader clean energy transition, you might have heard about the range of different colors of hydrogen. What is brown hydrogen, gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, or green hydrogen? So to help to distill it down, 
Brown hydrogen, which is hydrogen produced leveraging coal through gasification, produces CO2. Grey hydrogen, which is the bulk of the hydrogen that's actually produced at the moment, helps to produce hydrogen through a process called steam methane reformation. Unfortunately, this process as well, even though it's the bulk of the hydrogen production, uses and emits CO2. So now there is a new method called blue hydrogen. And blue hydrogen leverages the same steam methane reformation, however, it actually uses carbon capture and carbon storage technologies so that CO2 emissions are reduced and mitigated. But now we're moving on to this new era of green hydrogen. So the focus, of course, as we mentioned, is that hydrogen by itself is a clean burning molecule. So if hydrogen can be produced leveraging clean energy and renewable energy, then it stands to reason that it will help to bring down many industries' carbon emissions. That leads us onto the green hydrogen production. And so what is green hydrogen? It leans on a process called electrolysis, and it uses a technology called electrolyzers. And what it does is it splits out from water, oxygen and hydrogen. As we know, Water is made out of H2O, and so it splits out the hydrogen molecules. And of course, it's produced using green, clean, renewable energy. And so ultimately, it will help to bring down the embodied energy of a range of different industries and sectors around the world. It's attracting a lot of interest at the moment. And there's a lot of focus about how this can be implemented moving forward to help us move towards this decarbonized society as we look forward to net zero in 2050. But of course, you might be wondering, that sounds fantastic. Why hasn't it been rolled out everywhere? What's the hold up? There's a range of different factors for us to consider. Firstly, in its current form, there are high costs, both on the capex side for the electrolyzers, even though the prices of electrolyzers have been coming down over the past five years and are forecast to continue to come down moving forward, but then also on the opex side as well. It costs money to run both on the power side as well as the operations and maintenance. There's a range of enabling technologies that have to continue to be delivered and rolled out. As they reach commercial scale, of course, their prices and their costs will come down, and that will be when the economics may start to stack up for green hydrogen production. These enabling technologies are both on the production and processing side, as well as on the transportation and storage side. And it is worth noting that wind and solar, they're fantastic and there's a significant amount of investment behind them. They're growing, but they're still only a small percent of total energy generation globally. So these economics are not stacking up yet, but we know where the technology is heading. We know where the future focus is, and of course, we know where the investment is heading. And so the thought is that as costs can continue to come down, then of course, green hydrogen production will eventually look to be more economically viable moving forward. And so then having a bit of a think about those use cases. On the industrial side, as we mentioned earlier on, there's a range of different industries that have been difficult to decarbonize just due to the way that they're currently established and set up. Some of the most common use cases at the moment for hydrogen are in oil refining, ammonia production, methanol production, or steel production. But of course, as we mentioned, hydrogen can be burnt, which would then help to produce heat. And so it could be a substitute for natural gas in areas such as heating or cooking in the home. It can also be leveraged to store electricity, which previously may have been wasted. And of course, as the technologies for solar and wind and a range of other renewables continue to increase, production increases, there's a range of different use cases to be sought out for electricity and energy storage. And hydrogen is thought of as a potential opportunity to help to store some of that energy. But then on the other side as well, electricity generation. We all know about the excitement surrounding the electric vehicle sector. There's a huge amount of excitement, not only surrounding the EVs themselves, but many of the EV battery materials that feed into them, whether it's lithium, whether it's graphite, nickel or cobalt. And hydrogen is attracting a lot of interest as well on the other side. So hydrogen, as we know, is a clean burning molecule. And so when it's consumed in a fuel cell, it produces electricity as well as heat. And the only byproduct is actually water, which is interesting to think. When you're comparing it to the current incumbent use cases, of course, it sends off a range of different molecules up into the sky. There's a range of different gases that are produced. Carbon dioxide is emitted. So this is why hydrogen is interesting. Fuel cells for transport is where a lot of the excitement is, but particularly for long haul vehicles. If you're thinking about a range of different vehicles such as trucks, or if you're thinking about cargo ships, these cannot sit around and to have a battery that is large enough would take a huge amount of time to charge. Not only would it take a huge amount of time to charge, it would take up a massive amount of physical space and it would be inefficient as well to have to lug that around. So there's a lot of interest about hydrogen for its fast refueling times, particularly for those long haul type of technology transports. It's gonna be fascinating to see how it plays out, but it's not only for long haul transport, Companies like Toyota have also made fuel cell cars, leveraging hydrogen, a major part of their strategy moving forward. And we can only anticipate that further investment into the space will continue moving outwards. And so then the question is, where to from here? 
As we know, in any sector, with any new technology, adoption of technology and increased use cases will take time. It's going to be contingent on infrastructure development and how fast the renewable energy transition goes. We have seen a significant focus not only on ESG-focused investments, but on decarbonisation as a society and at a policy level as well, just over these past few years. And so if this continues to pick up pace, then the focus and the eyes on hydrogen are likely to continue to increase too. It will require a concerted effort from both the government as well as the corporate side. We see policy beginning to move towards hydrogen. Some of the leading governments around the world are focusing on it and putting money behind it. But along with that as well, there's a range of different private pioneers, such as Andrew Twiggy Forrest, the founder of Fortescue Metals, who are really flying the flag and really see the importance of this move towards green hydrogen moving forward. As a versatile energy carrier, we know that hydrogen will have likely many use cases as the potential continues to emerge and as, as investment continues into the space. And hydrogen is interesting because there's a range of different companies, a range of different startups, a range of different technologies that are looking to be developed. And each of them are having a slightly different slant or a slightly different play on the broader hydrogen space. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. As mentioned, we make daily videos. So if you haven't yet and you're new here, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our daily episodes. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'd love to know your thoughts. So drop in a comment below and a reminder that I'm not a financial advisor and nothing we discuss is financial advice. These videos are just here as that general discussion to be a starting spot for you to do your own research from. Thank you so much for joining us. This transition towards a clean energy society is fascinating. We'll continue to watch how it evolves moving forward. For now, stay well and happy investing.